Now please welcome the VP of Corporate Development at Cisco who will talk about driving innovation through acquisitions and investments. Please give a warm welcome to Rob Salvagno. Thanks. Good afternoon, everybody. So at this conference, you've heard a lot about how Cisco's innovating internally. But what about the innovation that happens outside of the company? And how are we leveraging that? So let me see a show of hands. How many of you are familiar with Meraki? I see a lot of hands out there. I see a lot of hands out there. That's good because you're at a Cisco conference and Meraki's a huge part of the story. But let me see another show of hands in terms of how many of you are familiar with the story of how Meraki came into Cisco? I see one, one or two hands. Well, I'm, I'm gonna start by giving you the inside view because this is just a glimpse in terms of what outside innovation looks like and how we're trying to leverage that to deliver value to the customer. So Meraki started off back in, in 2006, actually. And when my team first saw the company, you know, they were really small. They were doing a few million dollars in revenue. And we thought, you know, that's, that's a nice little SMB wireless play. But it was a good team and they had a good vision. So we knew it was something that we had to keep track of. So fast forward another year. Meraki now has tripled in size. And we, we checked back in with the, the Meraki team and they have now pioneered this new vision. And they call this vision cloud networking. Manage the network from the cloud. And we thought, hey, that, that sounds good. That sounds great. This is something that Cisco should do. But what did we do? We said, we can build that internally. So we started down that path. So now we're on that journey. Meraki's continuing to execute. We're building our own capabilities. Fast forward a year later, Cloud networking, it's starting to take off. Meraki, it's tripled in size once again. Cloud networking had hit that inflection point. And so we decided at Cisco, it was time to make that story part of Cisco. So we acquired that company at the end of 2012. Now what has happened since then? Since then, Meraki sales have gone up almost 20x since we bought the company. Now, that makes, me, that makes me feel really good because my team is responsible for acquisitions at Cisco. So, hey Rob, great job on that deal. But what gets me more excited is the reason that Meraki was able to see that success is they were fundamentally delivering on the value proposition that you had asked from us, which is how can I manage IT from the cloud and how can I simplify things? And we've taken that vision now, not only across Meraki, but we're taking that cr across the rest of our portfolio. That's the power of how we can leverage outside innovation and deliver that value to you as the customer. So what's fueling this? What, what caused Meraki to be? Why is this happening? Where's the next Meraki gonna come from? This is something you really gotta pay attention to. This is really the core, and the foundation of what we're gonna talk about today, which is the pace of change that's happening in the outside world is happening at an unprecedented level. And it's being fueled by the fact that the venture industry is pouring billions and billions of dollars into the startup ecosystem. 
In fact, if you look at what's happened over the last 10 years, the amount of money coming from the venture capital business has almost tripled. It's $84 billion today. SoftBank, just a few months ago, announced a $100 billion, billion dollar fund just in and of itself. So I've been at Cisco since the end of 99. I've seen the dot-com boom. I've seen a lot of market transitions in between. But I'll tell you, you ain't seen nothing yet. And so the question is, with all this change occurring, who's going to help you navigate that as a customer? Who's going to help you understand the changes in the businesses that you're in today, as well as how that's going to shape the future? What has made Cisco unique is that this is an intentional part of the strategy. You know, some companies, they just, they have a real hard time executing internally. Other companies may do that well, but they look at external innovation from a non-invented here type of perspective. Not Cisco. We think about innovation from five different pillars. And that first pillar is about how we internally build our own capabilities. That's a huge part, how we drive our own internal development. But there's four other components to that as well. How we co-develop with our customers, how we partner with the likes of the Googles, the Apples of the world, how we invest in companies to see where that next new technology is coming from, and then how we acquire these capabilities bring them into the company, and deliver that value to our customers. I'm going to talk to you about two of those today. How we invest, we invest to really see where that world is going. And leveraging acquisitions together with our internal development to bring that innovation to you. So let's start with acquisitions. You know, acquisitions, it's, it's what grabs all the headlines. And deservedly so. If you think about acquisitions, they have transformed every part of Cisco. They've changed how we look financially. It's been a big component of Cisco's growth profile. Now Chuck, as a CEO, he's talked a lot about the business model transformation that we're going through. And a lot of the software companies that we've acquired lately are subscription-based. In fact, most of them are subscription-based. That happens to be the business model that you're asking us for as well. Deliver to me different ways to consume your technology. So it's helping to transform our business. But innovation, it's, it's also about culture. And acquisitions have fundamentally changed the culture at Cisco. Today, if you look across the company, you look across the people that are here from Cisco at this conference, and one in six of us came in as a result of an, of an acquisition. So it's really built into our DNA. So that's all great, but let's talk about how acquisitions have actually influenced the strategy? How has it affected some of the things that we've done? If you think about it, you know, Cisco started off in the, the, the routing business, then we went into switching, and then we went into security, and collaboration, and web conferencing, and IoT, and analytics. If you look at all those new markets, Acquisitions have been a fundamental part of entering into those new areas. Now, one of the more recent ones that you may be familiar with is AppDynamics. And you may recall that AppDynamics, they were supposed to be the first technology IPO of 2017. But what they ended up being is actually 
Cisco's first acquisition of 2017. And what happened during that, the course of that process, Cisco actually acquired AppDynamics a day before they became a public company. That's never happened before. And I don't think there is another company that could have pulled that off except for Cisco. So we hear and talk a lot about public cloud, public cloud is happening, hybrid cloud is happening. What is that gonna mean to Cisco's traditional businesses? Well, acquisitions have played a huge role in helping navigate that transition. We've seen SDN come into the data center. More recently, we've seen that in the branch routing environment, SD-WAN, which many of you may be familiar with. Viptela has helped us navigate that transition within our edge routing business. So acquisitions have helped with this transition towards cloud as well. We're also mindful that we need to build off and leverage the architectures that you have a as a customer have already invested in as well. And so a huge part of what we do is finding technologies, finding capabilities that can build off of those investments that you've already made, help you extend those, help you build off those investments. I think a great example of that is UCS. UCS is a product that our customers have invested billions in over the years. You've made a huge commitment to that. As we started to see hyperconvergence into the market, we thought hard about how we were gonna play that. And you know what? Customers don't want another box. You wanna leverage hyperconvergence, you don't want another box. You've invested in your server infrastructure, you don't wanna invest in another box in order to move into hyperconvergence. That was very obvious to us. So as we thought about entering that space, we knew it needed to leverage that investment that customers had made in UCS. And so we partnered with a company called SpringPath. And SpringPath was built on the UCS architecture. After that product proved itself out, we acquired SpringPath, and all of you know that product today as Hyperflex, extending that investment that you've made around UCS. But you know what, all of this has to be put in perspective. It doesn't matter, it doesn't matter how fast you move, it doesn't matter how great you can scale, it doesn't matter how much you can simplify something if you can't secure it. You have to secure it. And so security is fundamentally the most active area from us, from an investment perspective and from an acquisition perspective. And I expect that pace to continue. So you may be thinking at this point, okay, Cisco's great about thinking about outside innovation. Sometimes you build stuff, sometimes you invest, sometimes you acquire, but how, like, how do you bring it all together? When do you do this, when do you do that? The great thing about this platform is we look at some of these market transitions and realize it's not about one or the other. It's about how we bring all these capabilities to bear to help navigate and get to where we need to as a company and deliver what you need as a customer. So let's talk about that relative to a transition you're very familiar with, which is SD-WAN. Go back a number of years ago, branch routing, edge routing, it's a core business for Cisco. Multi-billion dollar business, a, a business that we've been in for decades. And we started to build on the next generation of that. And we called that project IWAN. I think about IWAN as the sort of the predecessor to what you were starting to see in the SD-WAN world. So big investment in branch routing, starting to build the next generation of that. 
At the same time, remember the, remember the venture capital piece, pouring billions of dollars into the markets, market space. We started noticing that venture was betting big on what was happening from a startup perspective, putting hundreds of millions of dollars into the SD-WAN space. And look, this market, it was big enough, it was core enough, and things were changing fast enough that the way that we looked at it at Cisco was, you know, it's, it's not good enough just to bet on internal development. We got ahead of lens into what's happening outside of the company as well. And so as a result, we participated in that venture effort and we invested in one of these startups as well. So now fast forward a few more years. Now we're getting into 2017. And SD-WAN, it's hitting an inflection point. Used to be something that people were just talking about. Now we're seeing it within our biggest customers. They want to make the move. And we've been, we've been executing internally, but we're not going to get there fast enough. Market's moving too fast. And so we decided we got to go outside the company. And so we went outside the company, looked at all the startups out there. And you may think that the most obvious company for us to acquire is the one that we invested in. Hey, we invested in an outside company, we're going outside, Let's, why didn't you acquire that company? Well, the answer is the market had changed a lot. And we needed to find the company that best fit the market that we are now in and what our customers wanted. And that company ended up being VeloCloud. Uh, Viptela, sorry. VeloCloud was the company we invested in. Viptela was the company that we acquired. Since then, Viptela is now the lead SD-WAN offering for Cisco. And so it has moved to the forefront is what we lead with as a company for our customers that want to invest in that move towards SD-WAN. So one of the questions is, how do we think about where that next Meraki may come from? Where is that next Viptela? Where is that next OpenDNS? And we participate in where the world is going by participating in that $84 billion, that venture ecosystem that's fueling all of this innovation. We're a part of it. Cisco today is one of the most active corporate VCs in the world. And we've been doing that for decades. We invest not only in the US, we invest on a worldwide basis. And this is a wide spectrum. We, we, we'll, we'll write a check for $500,000. Two companies, two, two people have an idea. Seed that idea, $500,000. You know what? We'll also write a $70 million check. We'll write a $70 million check where we have confidence in one of our technology partners and we want to get behind that. We want to get behind it, we want to help them scale it. So whether it's a small opportunity, small seed, big scale, we can do it all. Now, I can't pretend to have a crystal ball. I don't know where the next Meraki is gonna come from. But I can tell you that Cisco is in a great position given the pervasiveness of the lens that we have into the market, in what's happening from an outside perspective, to have our eyes on what happens next. So let's talk about a little bit of where those investments are focused. How do we think about where to put money? And it's sort of similar to our overall approach to innovation. So one, we're looking for big new markets. That's gonna create a lot of change. MapR, company we invested in a number of years ago, helping some of our largest customers deal with the explosion of data. Cohesity, 
Cohesity has been one of the beneficiaries. Let's go back to that 84 billion in venture capital that we talked about. Cohesity earlier this week announced that it had raised $250 million to help scale the next generation of its business. Now, why are investors so excited about it? Why is Cisco so excited about it? Well, Cohesity is fundamentally disrupting the secondary storage market. You know this is backup and replication. These are some areas that haven't changed for decades. Billions of dollars there to unlock. Cohesity's doing it. Now, we have investments in over 100 companies. And I will tell you, Cohesity is one of the fastest growing, most exciting companies that we've been a part of. They're at the pavilion. I encourage you to go check them out. We also have to realize that innovation is global as well. And there's regional innovation that happens that's very special. Let's take a place like Israel. Israel, known for creating leading capabilities from a cybersecurity perspective. Well, we want to tap into that innovation. One example of that, we invested in an incubator called Team 8. Team 8 was founded by the former head of the Israeli intelligence division. And I would say that person knows a little bit about cybersecurity. So as a result of the investment that we have in Team 8, we have a seat at the table around helping determine what cybersecurity threats that we want to go after next and, and incubating businesses against that. Team 8 has incubated at least four companies so far, and I expect more to come. That's just one example of what we can do by being tuned in to what's happening at a very regional, very local level. So how does this, all, this invest, all this investment dollars get deployed? Think about it in two ways. One, there are core businesses to Cisco today. These are areas like security, data center, collaboration, IoT. Those are the businesses that we're in. Those are the businesses you've invested in with us. They're still going through a ton of change. And so half of what my team does, we spend a lot of our time in these core businesses, about 50% of our investment activity. And besides helping us navigate the change that happens in this world, it also leads to a lot of obvious partnership opportunities as well. Great example, we invested in a company a number of years ago called Live Action in a core area for Cisco. They play in the network. They provide network visibility across really complex networks. Well, for our customers who are moving to things like SD-WAN, who are doing branch office refreshes across not tens or hundreds, but thousands, sometimes tens of thousands of locations, visibility across your environment is critical. So this example is uh, a very tangible one. We partnered with Live Action to help reduce operational costs while refreshing the network and rolling out video. The result of that collaboration was 20x, 20x increase in network troubleshooting efficiency. And the rollout of video worldwide across thousands of locations. And I'm talking about a huge customer here. This is a Fortune 100 customer. So this is how we are tracking things within our core areas. But what's the future going to look like? That $84 billion, where is it going to go next? And it's going into areas like this. Drones, robotics, AI, machine learning. So we're not only investing in the areas that are core to Cisco today, we're also investing in the areas that are going to shape the future of the markets tomorrow. And you should care a lot about that. 
Now everybody likes to take a picture of, of, of this one. Everybody hears the acronyms AI, ML. And it's easy to say, hey, this, you know, this is just hype right now. When is it going to come? But I'll tell you, we are seeing this starting to impact our customers today. I'll give you one example. Upskill in the augmented reality space is starting to change the way that customers have changed their business already. Let's check out the video. Some people have the impression that wire harnesses are an easy build. They're not. There are literally thousands and thousands of wire, typically in a manned craft or a commercial airliner. When we first started this program, we had paper. All the routing instructions came printed out on a big phone book, and the employee had to use a ruler to keep the place, look up, look down, look back, etc. Then we kind of went away from that. We started pulling up our information on the laptops. But looking at the laptop on a constant basis, your eyes are adjusting constantly. So by the end of the day, you've got a raging headache. You have to stop what you're doing, go to the keyboard. You know, you're always kind of looking back and forth. You do kind of lose your train of thought at times. You're like, oh, did I really just see what I saw? And you have to type it up again. We have anywhere from three wires, four wires, to 90, 100 wires to go into one connector. So every little bit of technology really does help. Start wire bundle, scan order. We look for the big changers. Wearables, as an example, is what we would call a step function change. Rather than picking up seconds or minutes, step function change gives us an opportunity to cut the build time by 25%. Okay, Skylight, local search, 0550. We realized we had voice command. And that was huge. You now you have two hands on the product the whole time. You don't have to take anything off. Once you put them on, you'll say, Skylight show you on the diagram and then you'll take the wire and you'll just pop it in fast as heck. You know there's video streaming if you have an issue they can see it from their laptop or wherever if you're streaming it through your glasses then you can store it anytime you pull up that assembly they can actually watch the video and say okay I need to build it like this this is what the final product should look like. Okay Skylight logo search 186A Product, we have to send it out 100%. It could be your family, military. You can't pull over if something goes wrong, you know. The harness that you're building gives the pilot visibility at night. The harness that you're building gives him safety visibility if something should go bad. You know, you always want to have first time quality. With the wearable, you always know where that wire is going to go. My team's a wonderful team to work with. Skylight and video. You know, that video, it impresses me every time. And when you think about what Boeing talked about, they called it a step function increase. I actually call that a revolutionary change. And that's what we're going for, that's what we're going for here. That's what the result of all this outside innovation is going to lead to. So how do you put yourself in a position to see that? How do you put yourself in a position to be ahead of the next person? How do you put yourself in a position to move on that quicker than, than others can? Well, that's what we're trying to do with this investment capability. We're investing up and down the stack. We're investing in components. We're investing in infrastructure. We're investing in applications. We're doing that on a worldwide basis. Whether it's in the US, in Israel, in Europe, in APJ, wherever innovation may be happening, whether it's in our core businesses or the ones that are going to shape tomorrow, Cisco is in putting itself in a position to see and respond to that. So we're going through this journey together. There's an unprecedented level of change happening in the market. It's being fueled by this rich outside ecosystem. Cisco's got a long history 
of leveraging that outside innovation through what we can do from an investment perspective, through what we can do from an acquisition perspective, and deliver that together with our internal capabilities to deliver value to you. I don't think there's anybody in a better position to do that than Cisco. So come join me on that journey. We have 22 of our portfolio companies at our investment village today. Our investment village today. Uh, the cohesities of the world, the upskills of the world. They're all there. And you know what? I think there may be another Meraki or another, another Viptela amongst them. But you have to go check that out for yourself. Thank you. Rob Salvano, driving innovation with acquisitions and investments. If you have not yet had an opportunity to visit the investments pavilion, straight down the main concourse and right across from the campus, and this is where we are seeing C uh, Cisco seek out really all the best and the latest and the coolest innovation. Some of it comes under the Cisco umbrella, other pieces of it, it's just because we need to advance the industry and the best way they do that is through collaboration. We're very proud of that here at Cisco. So I'm glad for that innovation session. Right now, uh, our friend Stephanie is down on her way to Rob, and as soon as she finds him, we'll toss that way, but here in the studio with me by my friends Annie Murphy and Mandy Schneider. I've missed you guys all day. I don't like I when know. you're so far away. I know you're nearby, but it's not the same as us being here together. Yeah. You guys have done amazing work today, both of you. I just want to let you know, and I wanted to ask, what has really excited you about day two of the show? What, were kind of, what, was, what was your personal highlight for you, Annie? I, I mean, we've been running around, and it was great to be in the world of solutions. I got to talk to J.W. McIntyre a little bit for the network operation center, um, one of the things that the speakers do is that we have to spend time in terms of meet the engineer or meet the executive. So we got one-on-one -on -one time with customers that have to be scheduled. You also can schedule them here on site. So I had a chance to spend an hour with one of our customers and just talk security and just kind of geek out for a full hour. It was great. Isn't it nice to be able to hear it directly from that particular person too? Not through the other marketing channels, but hear from the customer directly. Mandy, how about you? Well, it was much more interactive for me today. I mean, it was interactive yesterday, but today I I actually went into the maker space. I saw people building their own computers mm -hmm. with Johanna and Catherine. I mean, that was so cool. And then, of course, towards the end, I got to play Battleship <laughs> with some attendees. And it turns out, I don't remember how to play. You don't remember how to play Battleship? No. Your, your youth isn't that far away. Come on now, you remember how to play Battleship. You <laughs> oh, blow stuff I know up. who Come we're on. playing tomorrow. I think we are. We're getting the entire crew down there. <laughs> You're getting ready down in the middle. I wanted to just quickly mention something that I heard this morning in the technology keynote that really um, uh, got me excited. Um, any platform needs to be open and extensible, right? We've been talking so much today in a lot of the conversations and a lot of the technology. Anything that we craft that is open, that encourages more customers to come on board and join us, that encourages all of those designers out there who are really working in a vacuum so much of the time, as we have hit a half a million mark with DevNet, the reason is we're making everything more open, which means whatever they develop, they can just bring in and help to lift all of the Cisco capabilities. That was really a big highlight for me today. And then uh, the opportunity to uh, talk to some of the guys about uh, here about uh, new customer outreach and customer experiences, I just loved it. So I'm looking down on the monitor, and sure enough, Stephanie is down in the Innovation Showcase with Rob Salvano. Stephanie, can you hear us? Yes, I can hear you. Hey, Hello. friends. You're Hello. looking fast. Fabulous here at the end of the day. Oh, thank you so much. I, you know, it's a hard, but I try. We have makeup artists and all that good stuff. Um, but I'm here with Rob Salvagno, VP of M&A and Investments, and he just finished an innovation showcase on acquisitions and investments. Um, Rob, I had the pleasure of doing a Facebook Live with you where we celebrated the 200th acquisition at Cisco. There was champagne, there was folks like Hilton Romansky and Tim Tuttle. It was such a party, it was such a good time. We now at Cisco have 204 acquisitions Correct. and over 120 active portfolio active companies. portfolio active companies. Investments. Wonderful. So you were just talking about on stage, you know, it really helps us give an early insight into really disruptive technologies. So what kind of trends are you seeing for the coming year? 
Uh, great question, Stephanie. So, you know, one of the aspects that we talked about today is there's changes happening within Cisco's core business, and we're investing a lot there. Areas like security, IoT, analytics. That's a, that's a huge focus, um, but we're also focused around things that are changing the future. And today we're seeing a lot of activity in areas like uh, machine learning, like uh, augmented reality. In fact, we're seeing not only how those are creating changes within existing businesses. For example, people are applying machine learning to areas like collaboration and helping you be more productive with meetings, more productive with your video. Uh, almost think about that as a, as a virtual assistant capability uh, that previously didn't exist before. So that's opening up uh, not only changing businesses that, that we're in today, but it's opening up new possibilities, new markets that I think um, we can only start to imagine. So Rob, I was also listening, I heard Israel being mentioned. Um, we have a global audience watching on Cisco TV right now, hello. Where do you see a rise in global innovation? Well, you've got one thing right, Stephanie, which is innovation is truly global. And today, probably about a third or more of our investment activity is outside of the US. And we have that focused around areas that, that uh, probably make sense to a lot of people, areas like Israel, it's been just fundamentally strong around things like security technologies. But we're seeing a rise of interesting uh, opportunities in other markets as well. You know, one that comes to mind is India. India previously very services centric, very consumer centric. Now we're starting to see the venture ecosystem and the startup ecosystem really pick up around B2B. And we're just at the beginning of that. So I'm pretty bullish, uh, not only in existing markets that have been strong for some time like Israel, but also what the future is for places like India and where that could go. Well, looking forward to seeing where we drive innovation around the world. You know, corporate venture investors are making a really big splash in the VC industry, and I think Cisco is one of the top leadership positions in corporate ventures. Um, but what sets us apart from the rest? You know, it's all about how we can provide some of the things that have made Cisco a great company and allow our portfolio companies to tap into that value. I don't think there's probably a better example than Cisco Live. So uh, 25, 26,000 attendees at Cisco Live, uh, hundreds, thousands of more online. Well, that's something that our portfolio companies would love to get exposure to. And in fact, they do. So we have 20 plus of Cisco's portfolio companies at the conference here today benefiting from the go-to-market, the customer, the partner relationships that Cisco has established. So we think we're fundamentally different because we're trying to create a value proposition that's not just based on the money we put to work, but based on the value that Cisco's built. And we've built such a strong go-to-market, customer and partner channel. We think that that differentiates us versus anyone else in the marketplace. Awesome, Rob. I'm going to go out there in the world of solutions and meet some um, portfolio companies. It was so great talking to you. Thank you so much. Steve, back to you. So much, thank Stephanie, you. and thank you, Rob, as well. We appreciate it. Speaking of which, we're going to take no delay at all in heading straight out to the Investments Village, which is straight out here in the campus. And I've got uh, Reggie right down there in the hall. Oh, there he is, looking so handsome here. Yes, I am. You're looking, you're looking smolder, way too smolder. You, you're way too stylish <laughs> at the end of the day. I'm feeling uptight. You're all nice and casual. Well, I'm pretty soon about to put on this hoodie because it's time <laughs> to relax. It's been a long day here at Cisco Live, but it's been an exciting one. And to talk about excitement and investments, we have Hatesh Saizpal. A senior director for investments at Cisco. Now, Satesh, excited to meet you. How are you doing? I'm good, Reggie. Pleasure meeting you as well. Now, I got a couple questions for you, and one of the first ones I want to talk to you about is sure. how are acquisitions and investments important in Cisco? See, acquisitions were very well known for as a company. They've served us really well over the last three decades. We're sitting at about 204 acquisitions. They've contributed anywhere between 1% and 3% to our growth one in six employees has come from these acquisitions. Wow. So the impact is significant. And you heard Rob Salvania talk about that in his broadcast session just a second earlier. But what's not very well known, but is also just as impactful, is our focus on investments. We're one of the most active corporate VCs in the world. We're out there leveraging the VC dollars that are driving innovation to get access to some of the brightest minds, some of the brightest entrepreneurs. 
And what that does is inform our strategy in those domains. What that does is give us the ability to become subject matter experts and go out and drive the right decisions for the company when it comes to acquisitions. So a pretty integrated story there between investments and acquisitions that served Cisco quite well for over three decades. We're pretty excited about moving that along and you know, getting it as close to our customers and partners to broadcast like this, through events like this. I mean, it's exciting. We're over here in the investment circle. You're talking about over 200 acquisitions. And with acquisitions, there's a lot of innovations. Right. So how are those innovations influences our customers and our partners? Yeah, no, this is a fair question. Look, we think over the three decades, we've built a really differentiated sort of access to innovation at Cisco. And what we're working on in a very concerted manner is bringing that access, that innovation closer to our customers and partners. So about two years ago, we embarked on a journey on portfolio development for Cisco okay. Investments. What that is, is a platform that allows our portfolio of investments to get access to our customers, our partners, the broader Cisco ecosystem of business functions like Cisco IT, marketing, supply chain. In doing that, we're taking these creative, innovative minds these amazing entrepreneurs and giving them the ability to solve problems for some of the largest customers in the world at scale. So it's a win-win. Our customers get the best technology in the world. Our entrepreneurs who are passionate about solving problems get a chance to work with the best customers in the world. And we get to play matchmaker. So uh, I think that's, that's, that's really what we're trying to do. This event here, Cisco Live, is one way we do that. We also curate one-to-one -one access for companies to connect with customers. We're bringing pitch days to our, to our largest enterprise customers, to our business function leaders, so that they get access to this innovation. They can make decisions on their own when they see what's out there. So again, being a facilitator, being a matchmaker, and trying to create as much opportunity to put this innovation in front of the right parts of the, the Cisco ecosystem is what we're trying to do. I like how you use the word matchmaker. So we're right. here at Cisco Live 2018 in Orlando, hashtag CLUS. And you matchmaking us with 22 startups. Can you tell us about it? Yeah, yeah, so this Cisco Live, we have almost 20% of Cisco's direct investment portfolio represented on this pavilion. So if you haven't visited us, in the last couple of days, please do. Uh, we're gonna actually give you a chance to talk to a couple of them, right? So we have data center, infrastructure, IoT, collaboration, security, all represented within that list of 22 companies. And I'd love for you to kind of talk to Cohesity. Uh, Rob mentioned them on stage. Okay. They're a massive, massive success story in the data center world. They just raised, as recently as yesterday, they just announced raising $250 million. $250 million. $250 million. You mean nine, 250, like two, five, zero, 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 zero. Yes, that's right. And uh, they're just an amazing story. They're disrupting the data center like nobody else. They're driving innovation through secondary storage and are just uh, gaining in every aspect uh, in the market. So I would recommend walking over, talking to them, and then flipping over to one other company, Duo Security, to give people a sense for what's out there. All right, let's do that. Let's, let's walk over, let's, let's meet. Let's do it. So you said $250 million. Is there a way I can get in on that $250 million? Well, I'll tell you who you can ask that question to. Better than me, meet Rob Salmon, who's the chief operating officer at Cohesity. And the architect in many ways of that number and the fact that we actually drove that round of funding. So Reggie, go ahead, ask him that question. Hey, Rob, it's a pleasure to meet you. Cohesity, I've heard a lot of things about you. Uh, to those out there in TV world, that ludicrous concert, this guy, I heard they're tight, they're real tight. So tell us about Cohesity. Yeah, we had a good show last night, Reggie. We had a great time. And to, to touch this point, we announced yesterday our, our funding of our Series D round, $250 million. You know, Rob talked about it up on stage in his session just a while ago. When you look at the investments being poured into to new technologies and startups today, it's more important than ever before. Chuck yesterday talked about a hyper-connected world. With a hyper-connected world, we're talking about exponential data growth. The solutions of yesterday can't handle those. That's the reason for our cohesity. That's the reason for a Series D round, quite large, probably the largest since 2015 in uh, investments in enterprise. We're thrilled to have a Cisco to be a big partner at that, as well as our new friends from the SoftBank Vision Fund. So I'm curious to hear about some of the impact you're having for your customers. Sure, sure. We are working with enterprises of all sizes, but certainly the largest enterprises in the world where they have isolated silos of infrastructure, where it's operationally inefficient, they're not agile with, that, with what they're doing with their data, and how they're even able to access their data is slow, it's cumbersome, and it's just not keeping up. We're able to come in, work with our friends at Cisco, 
and give them a solution that's a software-defined platform that allows them Google-like search capabilities where in data protection, file services, test dev, and analytics, they see something like they've never seen before. And I've heard we have a huge synergy between us and Cohesity. Can you tell us more about that, Ritesh? Yeah, so these guys have driven a lot of integration into the Hyperflex platform that Rob just talked about, right? Uh, through that, we're also leveraging those integrations to drive joint sales campaigns. Uh, in fact, we're, we're out there winning customers on almost a regular basis now, thanks to that joint sales campaign. And uh, both sides of the house, sellers on our side and sellers on theirs, oh, yeah. The, yeah, sellers on theirs are, you know, compensated to be able to go out and do this and motivated to do this right. So we talked about the innovation that our businesses, our investments, matchmaking, bringing more people in. I'm curious to hear about the technology. That's what I want to talk about. Cohesity is about consolidating silos, putting those together. And I know you guys have worked on a, a validated design with UCS. Can you tell us more about that? Yeah, absolutely. When I look at the work we've done with UCS, as well as what Hitesh talked about with Hyperflex, we're really talking about one plus one equals 10. When you start putting our intellectual property together between what you guys have already done and congratulations with the wild success Cisco has had with UCS and Hyperflex and then the momentum we have in the market right now, there's exciting things happening. You're seeing a lot more integration between the two companies, the things we're working on. So it's go to market as well as an R&D where we think we're adding tremendous values to enterprises today. So we've heard about Cohesity customers. They're the ones getting access to this cloud-in-the-box infrastructure. Can we talk about how this can be brought to the public and other people can get their hands on it as we move to the cloud? Yeah, absolutely. Yesterday in Chuck Robbins' uh, keynote, he talked about how important the public cloud was, specifically had Diane Green up on stage on Google Cloud. The Cohesity solution was built from the ground up to work in the remote office, on premises, and in the public clouds. As we think about a cloud environment for a customer, and as Cisco thinks about it, it is the entire environment. So we wrap our entire solution around what customers want to do on premises, at their most remote offices, and into the public multi-clouds. Pretty exciting story. Well, I'm, I'm curious to see what you guys do next. Between this innovation in data center, the ludicrous concert, $250 million, you're three for three today. You're, you're, you're having a really good couple of days, aren't you? I'll tell you what, working with Cisco, that's the grand slam. So we're having a lot of fun with these guys. They're great friends. It's been a really good week for us, and we're thrilled to be here at the show and look forward to doing some really exciting things together. Looking forward to it ourselves, y'all. Thank project. you. Thank you for the partnership. It's amazing. The partnership that we make through our investments. Let's see what we found out about more of that with Stephanie. Stephanie, are you out there? Hey, Reggie. I don't know if you can see me, but I'm also in the investments village. I feel like I'm right behind you. Um, you but here we are in the Duo booth. We are here with Ash Javada. He is the VP of product at Duo. Ash, can you tell us what Duo is and what problem you're trying to solve? Sure. Uh, Duo is a cybersecurity company. We're cloud-based. Uh, we've been in business for about eight years. And we provide trust for our customers to make sure their users and devices are inspected well before granting access to the applications. So Ash, you have a partnership with Cisco, correct? So can you tell us more about that? Sure, so a lot of our customers use us mainly for multi-factor authentication and device inspection. And we've got more than 10,000 customers and a lot of them use us to secure access to Cisco VPNs. So for example, if you're logging in using Cisco ASA or Cisco Firepower, we make sure the credentials uh, are secure when you're logging in. And we also inspect the device at the time of access. So I am pretty interested in this multi-factor authentication. Can you give us a demo of what this looks like? Sure. Would love to. I would love to actually give a live demo. So here's my laptop. We offer a single sign-on experience. You don't need to use it all the time. Let's take a scenario where you're logging into Office 365, You know, a, a common application a lot of our customers use. You type in your primary username, as you can see, and type in a password. That's your primary credential. You log in. And this is where we actually present what we call our authentication prompt. We give you several options for prompt. In this case, I'm going to select a U2F where I just touch the USB key on the right, and that's it. I'm in the application. So it's extremely easy for the end user, where and the end user is not spending a lot of time for authentication. In the same scenario, I actually downloaded a really out-of-date Firefox for this demo. So this is a Firefox browser. I'm logging into the same Office 365 application from the same location. But in this case, you'll see a different user experience. 
I type in the password, you know, the primary credentials and so on. I say login. In this case, you'll actually see this small orange banner pop up saying that my computer is out of date by almost two years. If I'm like any other user, I'll be like, whatever, I just want to log in. So I say, send me a push notification. That's, by the way, the most popular authentication method we have. Now, you see my phone. I just got a notification. My phone is pre-registered for this login. I have to open the authentication. You know, it approved using biometrics. I can say, deny this if I did not initiate this authentication. And if I say it's fraudulent, it'll send an alert to our SOC team, the security operations team. But in this case, I'll say cancel and approve. And as you can see back in the screen, I'm granted the permission, but it's telling me that, hey, you're going to grant, you're going to be accessing the application, but you're really out of date on Firefox, please update it. And I say skip, I'm back in my application. The last scenario I want to show is what a lot of our customers use it for. Uh, Let's say you have all your critical systems segmented and secured using a Cisco VPN. So this, now I'm trying to access the Cisco VPN, a very critical, you know, high priority asset that is segmented using this VPN. So I type in my username uh, and password. In this case, you'll see a different experience for the end user. The end user is blocked because the system is out of date by more than two years. So these are the kind of policies you can set up where uh, we inspect the device and the user at the time of access before granting them access to the application. That was super cool. I liked watching that demo. Awesome. Um, and you guys are also also a recent investment of Cisco. Can you tell me what it's been like for you at Cisco Live? How do you like it here? That's correct. I mean, we're very excited to be at Cisco Live. It's a, it's a lot of really awesome energy. You know, I, I go to a lot of conferences, but at Cisco Live, it feels like it's relaxed, at the same time, very exciting. Uh, things are not in your face. We're given a lot of space to talk with customers and prospects. So we're actually having a really good time here. And Ash, you've famous, famously said that you're the most loved company in security. Explain that, why do you say that? Is it true? Uh, it's absolutely true. I mean, we've got about 10,000 customers. Today, we actually we got about five hugs. So customers walking by, see Duo logo and say, oh, you are Duo, I have you on my cell phone. You know, I love the user experience. So Duo, the name actually stands for bringing security and usability together. Those two were traditionally diametrically opposite. So we have, for example, one to five ratio of designers to engineers, and we work really, really hard to make security easy and, and effective. So that's the reason a lot of customers love us and they tweet about us. Uh, we recently did a survey and about 98% of them said they would recommend Duo to a friend. So you know that's why we are the most loved company in security. <laughs> well, here's hoping for more hugs for you, Ash, and Duo, and myself. Um, we're actually going to toss it to Reggie right now back in the Investments Village. Reggie, here's Here's to you. Thanks for that. It was amazing hearing about Duo and all of our investments. Imagine, there's 22 of them. So Hitesh, it sounds like our Cisco investment portfolio can really help our customers and our partners. For sure, Reggie. So the, the portfolio actually is 120 plus direct investments. 20% of that is here in the form of the 22 companies across data center, collaboration, IoT, infrastructure. And really we as a company, Cisco invests anywhere between 200 and 300 million dollars every year into investments. So for our customers, it's an opportunity to get access to curated, differentiated innovation. We do a lot of work, a lot of research into bringing those companies into the portfolio. So with, when they access our portfolio, they're getting access to some of the brightest entrepreneurs, some of the most innovative technology to go after the problems and opportunities they're trying to solve. Similarly for our partners, our partners are trying to keep pace with the change. And they're looking to try and you know, bring on new uh, partners, technology partners, to build new practices. Practices that can allow them to solve problems for their customers, continue to stay relevant. Again, the innovation represented within the portfolio of Cisco Investments gives them a great chance to do that. Companies like Cohesity that have momentum, Exabeam, Duo, many others that are here in the pavilion. So if you haven't had a chance to come by and look at them, please do. If you're looking to try and connect with us, go to ciscoinvestments.com. So certainly follow us on Twitter, at Cisco underscore invest, and uh, let's try and uh, get on this journey together. What do you say? I think I'm all for it. I can't wait to see what these investments bear fruit next year. They're, yeah, we're looking forward to it. It's been an exciting three decades, and I can only, I can only say it's going to get even more exciting as we move forward.
Uh -huh, it's going to be amazing. So you heard it here. Come up to the Investment Pavilion. Check out some of the new innovations we have, curated innovations that can develop our customers to the next level. And we can't wait to see what happens next year. Back to you in the studio, Steve. Great. Thank you so much, Reggie. Thank you, Hitesh. Uh, really good walk through the Investments Pavilion and a, and a good opportunity to see where Cisco is throwing its energies, its efforts, and its investments because this is what we're looking toward in the future. My friends, what do we have coming up tomorrow? Let's talk about a couple of the kind of key things that we want to keep an eye on for the day. Annie, let me start over with you. Uh, for tomorrow or today? Well, I don't know. Okay. You know, well, let's talk about today in a minute. Let's see what is coming up tomorrow that we have to look forward to. Um, well, obviously tomorrow we've got a number of innovation showcases. We've got some keynotes, but the really big thing that's happening tomorrow is our global customer appreciation event, also known as CAE, mm -hmm. around these mm -hmm. parts. Yay. Um, if you haven't already, go ahead and come up to one of the materials pickup. Make sure that you show them your badge. We're getting in by wristbands this year. Universal Studios, we've got uh, we've got Sam Hunt, we've got Cake, we've got Leon Bridges, we've got two cover bands, we've got Refugee, it's a Tom Petty cover band, we've got Slippery When Wet, it's a Bon Jovi cover band. Mandy tells me her favorite is... Wanted Dead or Alive. Yeah, we're going to oh. But I didn't know that. Cake was playing. I'm so excited Wanted about that. Dead or Alive. Well, I was thinking yeah. a little bit of more like, you know, shot through the heart and oh, Bob, yeah. you're to blame. Shot through the <laughs> Absolutely. Very cool. Yeah, uh, leave those badges at home. As any just told you guys there's no reason to bring your badge out to the park. We don't want you to lose it. We need you to have that badge for Thursday morning, so leave that badge at home and go pick up that wristband. Mandy, let's yeah. toss over to you. What do you think? What do people need to continue doing? Absolutely continue with social media. Mm -hmm. Hashtag CLUS. We are looking at your tweets. We are looking out for them. Your hashtags, everything. There's lots of prizes. Win a photo with a guest keynote speaker. Win backstage pass and meet the band one of those awesome bands, Yeah. write a blog, win a prize, and also at the end of each day, we will be looking and we will reach out to a lucky winner via social media, and we will, you will win a Fire HD 8 tablet each day here. So continue with the social media. We are looking out for you. We will hopefully get you a prize. And this is one thing that's really cool, right? We're not just showing the love to the 28,000 people who are here in the room with us, although we really do have a special <laughs> place in our heart for them. But for all of you who are tuning in virtually, wherever you are around the world, between three and 400,000 people connecting to the show virtually in some way or another. It's incredibly oh exciting, right? And uh, I mean, for some of them, it's three o'clock in the morning right now, but they are still on board with us, so thank you for your dedication, your time, and your effort. Annie mentioned a moment ago, great innovation showcases coming up tomorrow, and a couple that I know people are really going to want to target. Uh, data center and cloud automation with Hyperflex and UCS, and boy, we've been talking unified computing over and over. Every time we're on one of the security conferences, we're diving deep into UCS. Big one tomorrow that you're going to want to get there early, because I promise there will not be a seat left. Susie Wee, uh, the DevNet effect, right? Playbook for using Cisco's newest APIs, you know. This this is Susie Wee we're talking about. She is going to pack that whole area. In fact, there's nobody going to be left out here on the floor. They're all going to be over in the innovation showcase for Susie. Our NetApp partner showcase coming up, our IBM partner showcase tomorrow. Uh, Meraki, unlocking digital innovations with Meraki, and uh, you're going to want to be at every one of these, including several more. And then the Big Ideas Theater. Don't miss out on what's happening upstairs. Brand new for Cisco Live this year, and again, a lot of these thought leaders and disruptors, people who are deliberately coming in and shaking up the way people think, in some ways kind of undermining it to get us to think about things a little bit differently. We do have a couple of minutes left in the broadcast and I want to go back to what we were talking about before because you had some other fun stuff that you did today that you wanted to touch on, right? Well, I mean, we did a lot of the other things where we walked around and I got to talk to a lot of the customers. Um, there's a lot of other activities that happen around here with the conference besides just a world of solutions. We have a thousand sessions going on, 733 speakers. Um, we also have a number of tectorials and labs that happen earlier before we even came out to Cisco Live that were people that were here doing four hour and eight hour lab sessions here. We have walk-in uh, labs that you can take in here. We also have a testing center where you can renew your certifications. There's book signings that are happening where you can meet the authors of your Cisco Press book, not just order it and have it show up, but actually meet the authors and have them sign the books. All of that's going on every day here as well. It's really exciting and a great way to get to all that information 
information, head into the Cisco Live app, right? Because you can go directly to these, that way you don't miss anything, you can sign up for each of those sessions, they'll be in your calendar and they'll pop up to remind you so you don't accidentally miss anything. Hey, I know that guy walking by, come on up here. Come on, come on, come on up here. Oh, look, All right. it's come everybody. here guys, come here guys, come here guys. Okay, yeah. so fabulous, they, they made their way back. You can tell that the show floor is in fact closed and we're here after hours. All right, so I'm going to ask for one more final impression of the day from each of you and that's about how much time we got left, go for it. Oh. Final, uh, <laughs> final thought of the day. Interaction yay. Interaction yay, Stephanie, to you. Um, cool, fun investments. That's it. Cool, fun investments. More and more. Make Special it happen. Special treat for tomorrow, ITM, leadership. Leadership at Cisco. Amen, so good. Guys, thank you all. We, again, so appreciate your being here. We're going to see you tomorrow for day three of the show, another full day packed with sessions, capabilities, making new friends, and then tomorrow night, customer appreciation event to all of you who are tuning in remotely. Thanks again. We will see you first thing in the morning, and we're going to roll right up to the bitter end. Thanks, everybody. Bye. 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 See you tomorrow. Ding. 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 Ding.